everyone, it's Sonia from Arithmophobia No More, and today we're going to be talking about the substitution game. Now, I learned uh, about this game at the Catenio Conference this summer, and it's pretty easy. What we're going to do is start with a simple equation, and so we have the equation 1 plus 2 equals 3. And then how this works is that we will change out, um, we're going to change the equation by substituting one number or letter, if you're using letters, um, with, an, with an equivalent way to state that value. Um, I'm going to make my substitutions, I'm going to make the things I substituted in red so you can see what that looks like. And the great thing about this game is that you can play with players or mom can play with one of the you know, with her her child, um, you can do a whole round of people, three or four people. It's it's a great game, and what it teaches the kids is that um, that there's lots of ways to say or to write a number down um, or to state a value. It's not just the number three; it can be all kinds of things. The other thing it does um, is it teaches the kids that they do not need to be afraid of of complicated mathematical statements. So let's just go ahead and I'll show you basically how this game works. So what I'm going to do is substitute the number 3 with the, the statement 10 minus 7 and that's still the number 3 and we are going to only be changing out one number at a time we're not changing the entire value so we don't keep changing we know we're not going to write another way to state the number three what we're going to do is just take one of the numbers in the entire statement so now player two will come along if you have a player two and we'll choose one number and substitute that for with another with an equivalent way to state the value so what we've done this time is take the number two and change that with the square root or substitute that with the square root of 4 but our sentence still is um, nothing's changed it's still equal uh, 1 plus 2 equals 3 is the same as 1 plus the square root of 4 equals 10 minus 7 and each successive turn uh, only one number is substituted uh, in the that what's going to happen is that this equation is going to build out and start to look like a pyramid. So in this next statement, we have taken the number 1, and we have substituted that with the statement 22 minus 1. We have the, the next one will be, um, we're going to take the 10, and we will substitute that with 2 times 5. So now our statement reads 22 minus 21 plus the square root of 4 equals 2 times 5 minus 7. So this is going to start to get a little bit more complicated with each successive turn. And uh, it gets pretty impressive as, the, as this goes on. So this next one, notice that we didn't remove the square root sign. Uh, what we did is just change the 4. So we replaced the 4 with 16 minus 12. <clears throat> so this one, uh, we're going to take out the 7 and replace that with 1 quarter of 28. And then this, we have one more I want to show you. Um, and you, we certainly don't have to use square root signs or fractions, but you can. Um, and it certainly makes them a lot more exciting. So this last one, uh, what we've done is 2 times 5. And all we've done is replace the 4 in 1 quarter with 64 divided by 16. So we now have 1 quarter equals 1 over 64 divided by 16. Now the slick thing about this game, which I loved, is that this last statement we're going to write down and put it somewhere. Like say in our desk or something like that and in a couple of weeks we're going to give this back to the students and ask them to simplify it and create a problem or create the problem with the rods and in this in what's going to happen is that they will reduce it and it should look something like this one plus two equals 
3. But how cool is 22 minus 21 plus the square root of 16 minus 12 equals 2 times 5 minus 1 over 64 divided by 16 times 28. That is way cooler than 1 plus 2 equals 3. And the children learn um, how to how to build equations from the ground up. So as you get older, this stuff is not frightening at all. You have these big mathematical statements, and they know that all of this can be reduced into something very simple. So that is all I have for you today. If you want to learn how to use your Cuisinaire rods, um, or base 10 blocks, go to arithmophobianomore.com. You'll have links in YouTube, if you're in YouTube, at the bottom in the description. And you can click on those and um, you can join us in our Facebook group and um, get some help from other people. That's all I got. Thanks. Bye, guys.